Hello, it's Film Frenzy, and today I'll be ranking all 17 Marvel Cinematic Universe films. Coming in in dead last, I have The Incredible Hulk. Now, this movie is not terrible by any means. In fact, I'd probably say it's about average, mediocre, a 2.5 out of 5. But the reason I'm putting it this low is not only that it's a pretty forgettable movie, it's that it doesn't really have like much character development. Like You'll see my number 16 as a standalone movie, maybe it's not as good as Hulk, but it has characters that are well established and are really just fun to watch. So Hulk, it really just doesn't have like much to take away from. The villain is forgettable, the characters are forgettable, it's just a move that just forgotten. Like most people don't even know that this is part of the MCU for crying out loud. So that's my reasoning for why this is the worst Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Now I have Thor: The Dark World at number sixteen. Like I said before, this is a pretty weak standalone movie. But what saves it is that they already had established characters like Loki and Thor and stuff. So when they got this movie, they didn't really need the exposition. So that's where it excels. Loki is definitely the best Marvel villain. He has a lot of personality, but that also hurts the movie because it's called Thor the Dark World. Thor should be the most interesting character, and he is not. He's an okay character in this, with Loki really standing out. Then also has, in my opinion, the worst Marvel villain, Malekith. Super forgettable. The, the main relationship between Jane and Thor is forgettable. Even, like, they did not use Natalie Portman's amazing acting at all. And then the humor is really good sometimes and also a little too goofy sometimes. And the movie is just kind of not very consequential. It's just kind of there. It introduces the Aether, which is an Infinity Stone, which is a big deal. But that's about it. So that's why Thor is coming in so low. At the number 15 spot, I have the MCU's first sequel, Iron Man 2. I feel like there's a big jump between the previous two movies and Iron Man 2. Because Iron Man 2 is a pretty solid movie, I must say. Like... The main thing that's the appeal in this movie is the characters. It has a great cast. Rob Downey Jr. as Iron Man is awesome. He's a great character. Great chemistry and dynamic relationship between him and Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts. I thought Justin Hammer, who's um, Sam Rockwell's character, was a pretty interesting character. I like introducing Black Widow and how Don Cheadle took over as War Machine. There's great humor and mixing of dramatic moments. There's some really good action sequences, especially the Monaco race sequence. But there are a lot of cons. Like, it has a very forgettable villain and is overall just a kind of a forgettable movie. Because it's more of just a lead up to the Avengers than having its own good standalone plot. And just really doesn't live up to its predecessor. Up next, I have Avengers Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron is really a mixed bag. In some ways, it actually improves on its predecessor by having a lot of good dramatic moments because I found the original Avengers to be a little too light and breezy at times. But this film still doesn't la just lacks that fun aspect of it. And it's cool to see the heroes together. That you have some good new characters like Vision and Scarlet Witch. Um, there's a great chemistry again, like always between the Avengers. There's some good funny moments. I think the fight scenes, like, they have really good fight choreography, and Josh Whedon is a really good director. But it's overall pretty unforgettable with the unforgettable main battle and villain with Ultron. I thought he was going to be awesome, but he was just kind of underwhelming. And then the movie, the plot was kind of all over the place, like with the Hawkeye scenes, like as family. And then Quicksilver, like, he just died, like, right away. Like, you didn't even care for him that much because they didn't, like, establish the character very well. So this movie is kind of just totally inconsistent and just not as good as the original Avengers. A quite controversial pick coming in at number 13 I have Spider-Man Homecoming. Similar to too, how too dark of a tone plagued Avengers Age of Ultron, too light of a tone plagued Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man is supposed to be a pretty fun character which this movie is definitely fun. It's hilarious with a great script, great deliveries from an awesome cast but Spider-Man has this big just like darkness surrounding him too because he's kind of responsible for his uncle ben's death and since they didn't even bring that up in this movie which i respect because they're trying to differentiate it and like not just go back into origin story stuff it just kind of like lost all of spider-man's like con inner conflict and so the film became just too like light with two little stakes like you didn't even see any blood like i don't even know how he wasn't like getting hurt from all these things it just wasn't dramatic enough there was not enough iron man 
And since it, it wasn't dramatic enough, also, like, you're not as invested in the characters. I found the main love interest compared to, like, the Gwen Stacy or, like, the Mary Jane one. This was just so boring and uninteresting. And then lastly, the villain. People love him. I don't know why he's so just, like, everybody's saying how great Michael Keane's vulture was. But I found him, he had a lot of potential. And then, like, one scene in, he just all of a sudden switched and became way bad. And just wasn't, like, the pacing was just a little off with his, um, his development. And the big reveal, which I won't say about his villain, is kind of a little bit of a ripoff of the original Spider-Man. Next up, I have Ant-Man. So, with this movie, honestly, there's nothing really too wrong about this. There's a big divide between Spider-Man and this, because now we're into the fours range. These are really, just really good Marvel movies. And so Ant-Man, the reason that I'm only giving a 4 out of 5, is because it's not like super special enough to be any to warrant anything more. Like there aren't too many cons to say, but like the the movie, I almost think of it as like a lesser version of Guardians of the Galaxy. Like it's super funny, it's got some good heart, but not nearly as much as Guardians. And this is like a heist kind of type movie, so it's just a very small scale film, very contained story in the MCU, and I think it excels at that. I'm really glad that it exists. It's just a fun watch if you don't want anything super like, just serious. So I think this is just a really good movie, and that's why it's coming in at number 12. At number 11, I now have Thor. And this is an interesting movie, because I feel like it's sometimes a little underrated and overlooked. So, yeah, it's in the worst Marvel series, but it's actually a pretty darn good movie when you know, actually go and watch it. Like, it's got some good humor with the fish out of water stuff, because, you know, he's new to Earth. It's got very good drama and a good theme about humility because he's very arrogant at the beginning and he's banished from Asgard and like doesn't have his hammer but he still becomes like he just becomes a better person. And I love movies like that. And additionally, it has some really awesome action. And it's very original because it introduces fantasy to like superhero movies in the MCU. So overall I think it's a really solid movie that I feel like is overlooked a little bit. Now we're in the top ten. And this is a choice I know people will have a lot of beef with. Number 10 is The Avengers. So, here's my logic here. I, feel, I really like intimate movies with really good character development and solid plots, good themes, and not just a good superhero movie, but just a great movie. And I feel like Avengers kind of delivers. It has a really funny script. Joss Whedon did a great job. It's very funny. I love their interactions, that's probably the high part of it. It's really great that they have Loki as one of the villains. But, like, the actual climatic battle, the Battle of New York, was just a bunch of, like, monsters, like, and a blue sky beam, because, of course. And, like, it didn't really have much, like, personality to it, because they're just fighting these random, like, monster guys, like, aliens. And so there wasn't really any, like, too much plot to the movie, I felt like. It was just them, like, talking with each other and, like taking, like, knocks at each other, so, I think it's, like, a very mixed bag, this movie, I'm not exactly sure why everybody loves it so much, I mean, it's a little geek, I geeked out when I saw this, like, with every, all the major characters, this was, like, my first Marvel movie in theaters, it was really awesome to see, but I was a little under-impressed, because I preferred stuff like the first Captain America, which was a more intimate and grounded story. And now, at number 9, I have the newest Marvel film, Thor Ragnarok, which I saw earlier tonight. And so, there's a lot of buzz going around with this film, because it's the highest rated on Rotten Tomatoes of all the MCU films. And, no, it's certainly not the best. The thing is, there's nothing wrong with it, per se. It is hilarious. Thor, they finally made him interesting. It's exciting, fast place. There's good character development, especially with Hulk and Loki. It has good visual style. And there's some great battle sequences there. The intro just gets you right in. This is a super entertaining movie to watch. The thing is, like, it didn't really do anything super special. It felt kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, but if Thor was Star-Lord. Like, it's not continuous at all with Thor's character, but overall I think that's a good decision because, like, he was kind of boring before, and now he's actually the most interesting character in his own movie. So there's, I'm going to do a full review on it, but basically it's really good. It's super entertaining. It has a, a decent, subtle theme. I wish it was more evident about how, like, it's with the people that's, like, power comes from, not just, like, the, the like, objects or things. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but it's not really a spoiling movie. 
it's fun to watch, but it's not going to be anything super special that really defies or like transcends the superhero genre in any shape or form. Now we have Captain America The First Avenger. So this is a movie that I absolutely love. It's so fun to watch. It's just a good old-fashioned like war superhero movie. It is a great hybrid of those two genres. I it's kind of like Wonder Woman like that's kind of what Wonder Woman's based off of if you look at the movies. And this is just a super good movie. You I love Captain America. He's my favorite superhero. He's just such a good guy. There's some great messages in there about like what's on the inside that counts, even though it's a little cliche the message, of course. And it's just overall just a fun movie. It's not like super in depth or complex or anything, but it's just a good, powerful, and emotional film. Now I have the first film with magic in the MCU, Doctor Strange. Like Captain America the First Avenger, Doctor Strange is a fairly standard superhero origin film, but it has a, a uniqueness to it with the whole visual style and the magic and bringing the magic to the MCU. It also has a great cast, great actors, great acting. There's great character gr growth from Stephen Strange. I think Mordo, even though they didn't have a good villain in this movie, they're really prepping Mordo to be a great villain later on. There were some far-fetched things like the car accident, but it was just very memorable because of the visual style and some of the action sequences. And overall, it's just a really great movie balancing humor and drama. So, next up we have Iron Man 3, which I think is either the most or second most underrated MCU film. This movie is just so good. It's like so different from all superhero movies. I, I'm loving it. So, it's by Shane Black, and he's into like the nice guys, you know, or like, where it's very like you know like humorous or like buddy comedy films, and Iron Man three is hilarious for starters. Second off, it's more of a comedy drama than a superhero movie. It has some awesome action scenes, like the one on the boat at the end. But overall, it's just a really funny movie. It's really dramatic about like Iron Man, I, like him, like the Tony Stark, like the man behind the mask, and it's really cool. I think this villain is really underrated. Aldrich Killian, I think he's one of the four or five best Marvel villains ever. Like, he, it's about a revenge tale, and you don't see that much in superhero films. So I thought that was really awesome. And it just has a lot of cool, like, air, set pieces and areas that it goes to. And that kid, he's so funny. This movie overall is just so good, and I really think more people should just, like, give that big twist a second chance. Because this is a really rewatchable and awesome movie. Now in the top 5, number 5 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Like I was saying with Iron Man 3, this is the other most underrated Marvel movie. It lots of times gets thrown under the too similar to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 bus. And I don't think that's the case. Yeah, it has a similar visual style, but this movie is more character based and more humor based. And it's a more self-contained story, like it's mostly on Ego's planet. Which I thought was slightly a problem because I liked, I prefer the first one slightly more as you'll see because I like how it jumps around to the different planets and it's more fast paced. This is a more just like, just like thought provoking movie and I really love the theme about family and stuff and there's some great twists with the villain. I think Ego is probably one of the top three Marvel villains. I thought he was awesome. Kurt Russell does a great job. This is a super funny movie, a super dramatic movie and overall an excellent film. At number four, I have the first ever MCU film, Iron Man. So, this film, I was debating back and forth between this and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And in some ways, I prefer that film. But I went with this not just because it's a, an amazing movie, which it definitely is. It's just such a monumental and important film. Like, yes, it's a fairly regular origin story, but there weren't many at this time. This is a very groundbreaking and influential film for future MCU films. And it started the Marvel Cinematic Universe... I thought it had a decent villain, Obadiah Stane. Not great, but it had some twists in there. Tony Stark was an excellent character. I love the origin. Just when he goes out of the cave, such a great image. Overall, I feel like this film is just like Doctor Strange, but just a little bit better. Showing like, you know, humanity and character growth. And overall, there's just a really solid superhero origin film. And beginning the top three, I have Guardians of the Galaxy. The first completely cosmic superhero film. So, this movie is just so awesome, it has this wacky visual style, and it's just really just so fun to watch. I mean, I've watched it, I think, three times, 
and I still would love to see it again. It's hilarious. It's dramatic. It's touching. It's got excellent characters. They grow throughout the story. There's room for more future developments, and it's just a perfect origin story. This is my favorite um, Marvel origin story film, and I feel like they just do a great job with the irreverent humor and the visuals. It just they knocked it out of the ballpark with this movie. It is near perfect. And there's only two Marvel films I have over this. And that's just because I prefer that type of style. At number two, I have Captain America, The Winter Soldier. When I was just talking about style and how these top two movies, I love the style. Well, Captain America is my favorite superhero. And thrillers are pretty much my favorite genre. So, of course, this, I was going to love this movie. And, oh, most surely I did. I love the whole, like, conspiracy and all of, like, the political thriller stuff that's going on with this movie and the twists and turns that it takes like Robert Redford's character not the best Marvel villain but a really solid Marvel villain and I think it's just really cool the shield stuff and how it had such repercussions in the Marvel Cinematic Universe this movie is just very like rewatchable because you see all these little hints at stuff and it's just a very sleek and cool thriller I love how it blends the two superhero and thriller genres perfectly. Captain America Civil War. This movie is amazing. It has everything. On paper, it shouldn't work. I mean, I was not huge fans of the Avengers movies, and I saw this. This was going to have a huge cast. I was wondering, how could this be such an amazing movie? And somehow, it was super intimate. It was still a Captain America movie, whilst having most of the Avengers, and introducing Spider-Man and Black Panther, who had great roles in this film. They give great time for the to Captain America Iron Man conflict and how they don't really paint one of them as right, one of them as wrong, but just show the arguments like in a nonpartisan type of way. And I think that's brilliant. This movie has a great message about like vengeance and how far you'll go. The big conversation was between Baron Zemo and Black Panther at the end while um Captain America and Iron Man and Winter Soldier are all fighting each other. Baron Zemo is an excellent villain because he like orchestrates this whole plan. He's one of my favorite Marvel villains. And overall, this movie is just, it's got great humor, it's got great characters, it's got a great plot, it's got great theme, messages, script, everything. This movie is the epitome of what a super film should strive to be. Thanks for watching. I know it got a little long at the end, but please like and subscribe for more film content. I have reviews, news, and other rankings on my channel. Please comment below what your opinions are on the Marvel rankings. and. I'll see you guys later from Film Frenzy. Bye.